All right, so here are the sources. If you are arguing that Biden should not rejoin the New Deal and that he should keep all sanctions on Iran. So document one, even those Iranian leaders who remain strongly in favor of the nuclear deal, who want to rejoin the deal, are worried that Bi the Biden administration isn't motivated or strong enough to provide Iran the full range of sanctions relief it was promised, meaning lifting every sanction. People in Tehran, capital of Iran, who are against rejoining the deal continue to mock and make fun of deals supporters, deal supporters for being naive, which is being stupid. So basically, like, there's a lot of people in Iran that are making fun of anybody who thinks that we can actually ever come to a real deal. Document two. First, the Biden, Biden administration could make temporary, meaning not permanent, rules that allow Iran to sell oil while U.S. sanctions remain in place. Iran's oil production and oil sales are rising faster than expected, even with the COVID-19 crisis and the U.S. sanctions. This has provided officials in Tehran, capital of Iran, with relief because it reduced the immediate need to rejoin the nuclear deal. This is saying that maybe, um, maybe they're selling enough oil right now or they really don't even need the sanctions lifted. Document 3. Having made several significant offers to Iran in Biden's first weeks in office, the administration outreach has all been all but shunned, shamed, and ignored by the Iranians. They had already rejected Biden's opening deal, a U.S. return to the nuclear deal with pres which President Donald Trump pulled out of in 2018 if Iran agrees to slow down its creation of nuclear weapons. Iran won't budge, and it may not be worth the effort. Document 4. Iran rejected an invitation from global powers, countries, who signed the 2015 nuclear deal to discuss the possibility of Iran rejoining the nuke deal. This is a significant setback, meaning delay, in the Biden administration's efforts to revive the agreement, rejoin the nuke deal. Document 5. But in 2018, in a snub, which is kind of like a diss, to the nuke deal, the then U.S. President Donald Trump tweeted his country's withdrawal, stating that, I think it was one of the most incompetently drawn deals I've ever seen. We got nothing. He claimed that Iran had been using the financial relief, including the oil export money, sales, money, to support terrorist organizations in the Middle East. In document 6. Iran has decided to escalate tensions, make tensions worse, with West, with the West, which is usually referring to America and like France and England but, and Germany, by publicly confirming that they are gathering supplies to create a nuclear weapons. The escalation may be meant to put additional pressure on President-elect Joe Biden to rejoin the 2015 Iran nuke deal, which would end many sanctions for Iran, who was under a ton of economic money stress. But if Biden were to give in to Iran's threats of nuclear weapons and end sanctions, he would surrender, which means give up, his most important leverage, negotiating power. So if you have leverage in a cessation, you have the ability to kind of get what you want when negotiating against Tehran, which is the capital of Iran, and never achieve his stated goal of negotiating a longer-lasting, better agreement. Document 7. Five years ago, nearly every Republican in the U.S. Congress and many leading Democrats, including Senators Charles Schumer, Bob Mendez, and Joe Manchin, opposed the Iran nuke deal for good reasons. The agreement set expiration dates on key restrictions, ended on a demand in <coughs> inspection of Iran's nuclear problem, and let Iran maintain its nuclear enrichment capabilities. So that means continue to build nuclear weapons. It didn't address Iran's speeding up production of nuclear weapons, gave Tehran, the capital of Iran, the financial resources to sponsor regional aggression and terrorism, and, it, and ignored its abuse of human rights. Document 8. A nuclear-armed Iran poses a direct threat to America's closest allies in the Middle East. Israel is at most risk, as Iran's leaders have reportedly, repeatedly declared that Israel should be wiped from the map, which means destroyed. Document 6, or 9, Iran's military actions have led to increases in arms purchases by its neighbors, that means buying weapons, and a nuclear-armed Iran would likely spark a nuclear arms race in the Middle East that would further destabilize this volatile and vital region. The U.S. and the international community have interest in maintaining calm in the Middle East.